Your long awaited vacation has finally arrived. Cheers, friends. Hey there. Welcome to the Norwegian Epic. Western Mediterranean cruise. Friends, we just finished up a 10 day Mediterranean cruise that's been on our bucket list for some time. And I wish we could give this a 10 out of 10 glowing review, but as travelers, we know that rarely happens. So we want to give you an overview of the Norwegian Epic. We're going to give you a rundown of what the ship has to offer, what our cabin was like, the entertainment on board, as well as our dining experiences, including how they handled a gluten-free allergy. We'll have a separate video where we dive into all the ports that we visited during our Western Mediterranean cruise. I'll be sure to link it in the description below. And then we'll get into the highs and lows of our trip and if we'd recommend the Norwegian Epic to anybody else. And spoiler, we wouldn't. Getting from the airport to the port was actually pretty simple. Once we grabbed our bags, we cleared customs and we made our way to the lobby all we did was turn left and there was a sign that said cruise. Oh, and if you forget to tag your bags for the cruise, no worries, they have tags to do it right there. The Norwegian Epic is a large ship. It can hold over 4,000 passengers and more than 1,700 crew members. It was the third largest cruise ship when it launched back in 09. During our adventures, we found out the cruise was completely full. <laughs> so they didn't have room to move people around at all, and there are no upgrades available. I heard some people complaining that they have had maintenance to the room for three days and still couldn't take a hot shower. There is no room to move these people. Boarding the ship was actually a piece of cake. It didn't take long at all. During this cruise, we learned that passengers board in both Barcelona and Rome, so they aren't trying to disembark and board an entire ship in a matter of hours. We had already filled out our information and uploaded our documents onto the NCL website before leaving for our trip. And even though we had done that, our ship cards, which are just like magic keys, you need them for absolutely everything and anything on board, were still wrong. Just make sure you double check all the information on them. My name was misspelled and they actually duplicated all of Robert's information onto Justin's card. Once on board, we headed to our rooms and dropped off our bags. Then we headed to the mustard meeting location to check in. Since we watched instructional videos online, the people at the meeting location just had to scan our cards. Then our vacation officially started. It's very important that you do this and get it out of the way, as sometimes your drink package won't begin until you've checked in. Here we are. So this is a balcony suite. All right, so you first come in, you have a bathroom on the right and a shower on the left and we'll get right back to that and your sink is out in the bedroom area you have your towels hand towels face cloth small medicine cabinet the connection for the dryer and shavers lots of storage you can put all your souvenirs a little bit of television set with on port stations so you got two standard US and two European, I guess. This water came with the package that we purchased, so it's not complimentary. Nice big mirror, a little stool for getting ready. There's your hair dryer. There is a refrigerator, but it comes pre-stocked with a couple items that are not complimentary. And if you take them or open them, you know, you charge for them. Up here, you'll have your safe and some more storage. And our little duckies we're gonna hide. We 
have a full length mirror attached to your full length closet. Instant on lighting. And you have your half height closet. Once again, lots of hangers. And if you don't know, with these style hangers, you can slip up, and they slide right out, and they pop right back in. You also have some drawer space. And you have your patio, which is larger than I expected. I think there's plenty of room. You could probably get four chairs out here. I don't know if that's even an option. It would be nice to get some loungers. But it's definitely nice having this view coming in port every day, seeing what adventures await us. Now, normally, this is a couch that you make up into a bed, and it does pull out, making for a nice sleeping bed. <clears throat> Justin says it's pretty decent. You have some reading lights. The bed was pretty comfortable. On the far wall, you have your air conditioner. I can't say it gets super cold. We have it all the way down, probably the mid to low 70s. <clears throat> We're traveling with Gina's son, Justin, which is his birthday this week. So these are the decorations we bought. They are not part of the package that you can buy. And back to the bathroom. So whoever you're staying with, hopefully they love you very much. Um, this vent really doesn't help much. So we had a rule of only going number one in the bathroom. Anything else, you had to go down the hall, down the stairs to the first public bathroom. The shower does not drain very well at all. And you have to time your showers right to make sure you're not trying to shower at the same time everybody is rushing to get off the ship. Otherwise the hot water is just lukewarm. But if you're taking a shower off times, then there's plenty of hot water. I do include some conditioning, shampoo, and body wash. Well, some hand soap outside by the sink. And they're really saving space with this design. Just, it's more like a studio where you got the bathroom running right into the bedroom. So I'm glad this is the only ship in the Norwegian fleet or anybody's fleet that is designed like this with an open bathroom. So there's no privacy that has a curtain. But basically, essentially, if somebody's in the shower, you're either in the stateroom or you're not. We had initially booked a regular stateroom, but we had the chance to upgrade through NCL's upgrade auction. It cost $570 for a balcony stateroom, but let me tell you, it was totally worth it. Having a balcony the added space, the fresh air, and the amazing views from our room made our trip even more awesome. The ship does have a spa and fitness center, but we didn't get a chance to visit them this trip. The top deck is the main outdoor space. But there are two smaller decks outside where the lifeboats boats are located. One side has shuffleboard and the other has a jogging track. Uh, unfortunately, the jogging track smelled really, really bad. I think the vents from the garbage disposal must be located here. Um, but there were some very dedicated runners out there making the most of it. There was only one area with some cushion seating and it was located outside the arcade. More specifically, directly next to the ping pong tables, which happened to be in use all the time. The adult only area, H2O, is only adults only until 6 p.m. It does have its own bar, but the lounges are the same as the main pool deck. We've experienced better adults only areas on every other ship we've been on. There was a quiet area at the front of the ship on the very top deck, deck 19. We never saw it crowded. That's probably because it wasn't very easy to find. You had to take specific elevators to reach the deck. And they had the same basic loungers as the main pool deck, so we never found our spot. You know, a comfortable place just to relax and enjoy a cocktail while watching the ocean. There are a total of three pools on board. One in the H2O area, and you'll find the other two on the main deck. 
They are kind of small. One is more for lounging, while the other is better used for some short laps. They also have seven hot tubs, two in the H2O area, the other five on the main deck. Unfortunately, they all look like they need some care and maintenance. The top deck also has a basketball court, climbing wall, miniature golf, kids water play area, and some water slides. We have a full walking tour of the top deck as well as the main decks as part of our Walking Wednesday series on our channel. We'll include a link below if you'd like to check that out. And of course, there are plenty of stores to go shopping at on board. With all the typical shops we've come to expect, the jewelry shop, the watch store, of course, all kinds of souvenirs, clothing, snacks, and many other miscellaneous items you may have forgotten at home. The service throughout the ship was pretty good overall. Our room steward was friendly, but it was the first time anyone had told us their working hours. Our room was straightened, but there wasn't turn down service and we never did find a fancy animal towel on our bed. One of the highlights in the morning was the Washi Washi crew. They were always cheerful with their reminder song to wash your hands. The bartenders, super friendly and very quick at making drinks. Let's talk about the different places to eat on the Epic. The restaurant service has its ups and downs. NCL says they have nine complimentary dining options on the Epic, but in reality, they're like four. Five if you book the Haven Suite. The two main dining rooms serve the same menu, and the three options on the deck serve the same buffet-style food. The Shanghai restaurant and the noodle bar have the same menu, while Ocean's has its own. If you're staying in the Haven Suite, you get to enjoy a complimentary, special fine dining experience. The food overall was decent. We tried all of the complimentary restaurants and one of the specialty dining rooms. On the Epic, there are two main dining rooms, Manhattan Room and Taste. Now the Manhattan Room does have a dress code and we did see that being strictly enforced on days that weren't boarding days. We also did hear some passengers complain that while on other Norwegian cruises, the Manhattan Room didn't have a dress code. The menu is exact and the service is very similar, but the Manhattan Room does offer dinner entertainment, and if you want to catch a show while you dined, you had to make those reservations early in your cruise because they do fill up really quick. Otherwise, you're going to taste. Now we did eat at the Manhattan Room on the day we explored Rome, which happened to be a boarding day. Other than that, Robert said it was too much of a hassle to put pants on just to eat. The menu offered new items each night as well as having some regular options. They also used icons to indicate vegetarian, gluten-free. The service was mainly quick and friendly, and the food was mostly warm and reasonably seasoned, but taste is where we ate most of our dinners. The main buffet is the Garden Cafe, which had a good variety of food. They had a special section that changed every night, offering different dishes from what you could find in the main dining rooms. Other than that, the selection didn't change much. They had pizzas, burgers, fries, curries, crepes, chicken tenders, salads, and desserts. We mostly had breakfast there, and they always kept the amount of food out to a minimum so it stayed fresh. Now when the Garden Cafe was closed, you could head out to the Great Outdoors Buffet by the pool. It had the same buffet-style food, burgers and other kind of snacks. And for a quick lunch, you could try the H2O at the back of the ship, which provided some basic snacks like nachos. Shanghai Noodles is a unique Asian fusion dining experience that is complimentary. It is first come, first serve, and there is always a line. Now the bar within the restaurant is actually listed as a separate restaurant, but the menu does look exactly the same. Oceans was open for most of the day, but it's not 24-7 but it did stay open late, probably just until the last person left. It turned out to be a popular meeting spot for groups. If you wanted to eat there, you did need to talk to the hostess and get a table. They had a simple bar menu. We tried it a couple of times and the experiences did vary. Our best dining experience was at Moderno's Brazilian Steakhouse. We got one dining experience with the package we booked. It started with a salad bar, which was pretty limited. 
I was very excited to see lobster bisque, but it turned out to be fishy, extremely salty, and lacking any lobster. The cheese bread, which is usually a highlight for building steakhouses, was just okay. We got to choose which sides we wanted, and they were served family style at the table for everybody to share. They did have a good selection of meats. Make sure you tell the server or gaucho how you like your steak, because the edges tend to be more done than the center. They can usually accommodate different preferences. Some restaurants do offer gluten-free options. Unfortunately, there was only one or two appetizers and entrees to choose from. The staff does go out of their way to accommodate all allergies, and they do the best to alter an option to make it safe to eat. For example, a Caesar salad without croutons. There were three desserts usually available each night. A cheese plate, a fruit plate, and a scoop of ice cream. Nothing super exciting. We did try the gluten-free pizza, and unfortunately it just wasn't very good. It was prepared properly with safety precautions and cooked well, but I think it's just a poor choice of crust. NCL is known for their entertainment, which usually makes them stand out from other cruise lines. However, I have to say that the entertainment on board the Epic wasn't epic at all. Truthfully, it was a bit disappointing. They didn't have those Broadway-style shows that they're famous for. The best part of the welcoming show was Beatlemania, a cover band that played Beatles songs. And if you're a fan of the Beatles, you'll really enjoy this performance. We prefer more variety though. We watched them on that first night in the big theater, but we didn't catch any of their shows, which they performed nightly in the smaller lounges. It seemed like there were about three or four different music acts that just rotated around the ship and they would change up their set lists to promote as different shows. And some of the musicians did gather a following, but we didn't really connect with any of the acts. They made for decent background music, especially since the music being played over the speakers wasn't very good. Like they took all the bass out of the music. I don't understand any of this. You can't make that sound good. No. There were a few specialty acts that headlined the main showroom and a much smaller showroom they called the Spiegel Tent. They had vocalists, jugglers, and a quartet, but none of them had big stage presence. We're used to seeing a big production show like every night with props and lighting and special music, dancing, and lots of performers all over the stage. On the Epic, they only offered this kind of show like once a week. It was called Burn the Floor. I think most people like us were craving a more exciting entertainment, and so the lines for this show were long and they filled up quickly. The night we saw it was standing room only, so we had to stand at the back of the theater. Burning the Floor is definitely worth checking out. It's a lot of fun. Surprisingly, there were no comedians on board, which was a letdown. Overall, the entertainment felt pretty lacking. The best show that we saw was Howl at the Moon. It's advertised as a dueling piano show, but as it turns out, it's actually three talented musicians having a really great time on stage. They play songs requested by the audience, and it's really entertaining. But the only downside was that they actually performed in the Comedian Lounge, which has uncomfortable bar height stools. So if they had been in a more comfortable lounge, we would have stayed the whole show. Sadly, they didn't perform every night, but we were lucky to catch them twice. So I took a little nap when we got back from Cairns, and I guess my alarm didn't wake me up. So now it's 11.30 and I'm awake. So we're gonna go see what the nightlife is like on NCL Epic. The buffet is closed. There's no quick service stations or any kind of grab and go situation here. I haven't found an open drink station yet. So if you wanted something to drink, you have to find an open bar somewhere. Hot tubs are closed. The only late night dining option you have are O'Shea's, and it is packed. So 25 minutes is what it took from getting in line to getting seated, ordering, and the food being delivered. I've definitely waited the same amount, if not longer, at quick service spots on other cruise lines. The fish and chips are pretty good. The fish is very flaky. You can tell these are fresh out of the fryer. They're very warm. Now there's no complaint about these fries. 
So they're hot and fresh with just the right amount of salt. The One Sports Channel on board will show sports from around the world, usually around the time it would be more relevant to the home country. So the Stanley Cup was aired here at, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning. The Bliss nightclub was the only other place I could find to get a drink. The rest of the ship was pretty much empty. And it's one o'clock and the casino games have been disabled. No late night gambling. And it wasn't just the lack of late night entertainment. This video was recorded around nine o'clock in the evening and you can see the majority of deck chairs have already been put away. But there's still plenty of people out on the deck watching the sunset and just trying to enjoy some time outside. You know, it really felt like they wanted people to go to bed early. Let's get into some of the other things that we experienced during our cruise with the Norwegian Epic and our thoughts on the overall experience. One morning we woke up to find someone's underwear had flown off their balcony and onto the lifeboat outside our balcony. So that makes for a wonderful sight in the morning. We went down and reported it to the front desk. During the onboarding show, they made a point to tell people not to leave their clothes on the balcony because of this. It can get blown off and into the ocean where it could do some harm to some of the ocean life. So I really thought this might be a top priority for them. But for several days, the underwear just hung outside of our balcony where we got to enjoy the view every morning. It wasn't until after one stormy night we think the underwear was finally blown off the lifeboat. It was there when we got back to our room and it was gone the next morning. Hopefully one of the crew members got it and didn't fly into the ocean, but we'll never know. Now we saw the crew members constantly cleaning and doing some of the minor updates around the ship. The high traffic and touch areas were well maintained aside from the hot tubs which definitely needed some TLC. We noticed that the showers and some of the other areas around the pool were not as rough and did not have the same mold looking stuff that was all over these hot tubs. Just walking around the deck you can see the dirt building up in places. Now I understand that some of these spots are very hard to reach but some aren't, like these handrails and the cover to this emergency equipment. But these stacks look like they're just dripping soot. While we might not come into contact with these surfaces, them being so obvious it gives you a poor impression of the ship and does detract from just having a nice time out on the deck. Even the Norwegian sign on the side of the ship needed some major cleaning. And they said they were doing some kind of balcony maintenance yesterday, but definitely wasn't for our railing or our neighbor's railing. When you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars for a bucket list vacation, you want to be excited about coming back to the ship. This felt like we were returning to a three-star hotel. You know, a room you book just to have a place to sleep to go visit someplace else. But this cruise is not in the three-star price range. Speaking of paying, we prepaid all of our gratuities before the cruise, and we did have the drink package which included cocktails. And I noticed that the sign sitting on every bar talking about having to add a tax because of the port. But every drink we ordered, we paid an additional $1 to $4. Even during our sea day, it didn't seem to matter if we were in a port or not. Now I understand if we had been in a port, they would need to comply with local laws and charge taxes. At the end of the cruise, between three people, we spent an extra $70 on drinks. We have no idea what they were thinking with this bathroom design. There's no privacy. You know exactly what someone is doing in there. You can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it. The performers were really talented and I don't want to take away from their hard work, but it's not the level of entertainment we've come to expect on cruise ships. And no comedians, you know, that, that's not funny. There's this nice big screen back in the H2O area that they could have used for movies or some kind of late night entertainment, but nothing ever happened back here. Now we have seen reports that the NCL Epic will be going into refurbishment in 2025, but that seems like two years too late. We've also seen articles and reports that say NCL is still recovering from the world shutdown financially. So maybe they had to cut back on the staff, which would limit their entertainment options, the crew needed to keep things open late, and also make them hesitant to take a ship out of service for proper cleaning and refurbishment, losing that revenue. Now I felt like the complimentary food quality was a little above average from other cruises I've experienced. The staff was very friendly and for the most part had an easy time getting on and off the ship. The balcony was larger than I expected and it was really nice that NCL had this auction upgrade option that saved us hundreds of dollars compared to if we just booked the balcony room. Bliss Nightclub was actually pretty spacious with comfortable seating. They need to move the Howl at the Moon show into there and have the dance parties at the Comedy Lounge. So would I recommend Norwegian? I don't think I would. They did get us to our port safely, which is most important. The staff on board was friendly, but they were lacking the fun evening experiences most have come to expect on board a cruise ship. For me, it was just too much money for the level of experience that we got. Hopefully after the refurbishment, they'll have it looking good again and able to bring back the entertainment. 